Right on. All right, guys. I'm going to get this ball rolling. Um, welcome in. Most of you guys are students. I think everyone here is students, actually. Are you just starting? OK, awesome. Welcome in. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to be your Tech Talk speaker today. Uh, so not much of an introduction. But uh, as you're getting settled in, we have hand sanitizer, charging everyone $5 a pump for that. So you know, be ready. Uh, pizza, if you want. We aren't actually charging for anything. So thanks for coming. We appreciate you guys. Um, so yeah, today, uh, my name is Matias, again. Um, I work here at the Tech Academy. And uh, I wanted to kind of just jump into freelancing as an option for working. So. Um, I think it's important for people to start making money because you are developing these skills that are very like beneficial to society. And um, so let's talk about that a little bit. Is there any interest here from you guys in like doing your own work, like being your own boss, creating your own numbers? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Everyone should do it. It's like the best way to go to work every morning is just to roll out of bed, grab a cup of coffee, and go sit down at your own desk. Like unbeatable. Um, so, yeah, let's jump in. I just have some notes here. Don't have any formal deck or anything. So if you have any questions along the way, I'm happy to open up the space for a dialogue. So very uh, informal kind of presentation today. Um, so I just I want to talk about a couple of things here. Um, testing the waters, you know, seeing if this is something that you want to do ultimately, because this can be hard time consuming, like it's a hustle. So it's it's not just like, I think I'm gonna have a mimosa today and sit by the phone, see if some calls come in, maybe a project. Like it's like, no, you're gonna probably work more than you did at your day job. You just quit so that you could work from home. Like it's a hustle and it's a grind, but it can be very fulfilling. So um, you ultimately get to choose the projects you're working on. Uh, you get to target specific groups of people and like really jump into something that interests you. So I think that's very important. Um, and kind of like getting prepared for that is something you guys are already doing, actually. Um, if you're a student here, all, all of you guys are students here, right? Um, you're producing things in your portfolio right now that people are going to see as beneficial. Like other people don't know how to do the stuff that you're doing. You're specialized. And don't diminish that value because like even if you aren't finished with the certification like you don't need a certification to start right now like you just need those basic skills so that is um like everyone here is eligible for this type of work all right establishing a brand presence um you don't need to be facebook like you don't have to have this like polished website and like a name that everybody knows like all you have to do is just start telling people hey I do this for work on the side like this is my hustle something that I find fulfilling and I'm specialized in this so your name as a brand is perfect it's personal like people connect with that like people want to work with a freelance designer or someone who creates apps like customizable apps um, that personal brand is going to be a way to connect with the consumer or your client. Um, so you could, like, Matias designed my logo versus, like, Riptide Global Design Solutions. Like, what? Who's that? Like, what are they even doing? Like, design solutions globally? OK, well, Matias did a great job, you know. That's something that I connect with. So if you use your name as a brand, like that's, that's really powerful, actually. Um, everyone has a name, so they immediately just connect with it. You're another person. You're easy to talk to. It's not like a scary company that you have to confront and negotiate pricing with. It's very personable. Um, and so having that brand presence kind of actually gives you leverage over a specific market. So if your name is out there, then you have a reputation. And that reputation is what allows you to negotiate higher pricing, um, 
get more clients, you know, you can increase your numbers that way just by putting yourself out there, like putting your content out there, sharing with people, and um, that's brand presence. Does, does anyone have a question about brand presence or like, like there's brands all around us today that are just blasting stuff in your face and the reason that they're selling things is because they're constantly like putting content out there and like reaching you and blasting you in the face. So you can do that too. <laughs> and do you guys have any questions about what that looks like or like what yourself as a brand would be? Yeah. Oh yeah, well, yours truly. <laughs> like, that's um, that's because we do various forms of like advertising, uh, lots of social media posts. That's important. Um, and every time someone likes something of ours, it will show that post in their network of people. So all of those other people are also seeing that. Like, and that's that's why I think it's important to like build yourself up as a brand. Like. Posting on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is huge right now. This is like a very powerful platform. And if you're posting up on it regularly, like I, I think I made one post pretty recently on my account, like literally just one post. I haven't even put myself out there on LinkedIn very much, but it's huge right now. And that one post got 400 views. So you can see your viewership, like you can kind of measure those metrics, but um, LinkedIn is so powerful because when someone liked that post of mine, then it went out to their whole network. Like it shows up on that feed. Um, so I, I think there's certain like algorithms that you can leverage like LinkedIn. So if you're posting and people like it, then suddenly you're on multiple networks. So um, really like pumping out that information or data about yourself. Like if you have a cell phone and the internet, you could be one of the most successful people in the world. Like that's literally all you need is like a way to contact people and the internet. Like show people what you're doing and they will come to you, you know? And like ah, I wish Thomas was here actually because Thomas is working on some cool projects and he posts them on LinkedIn. And I think that's awesome. Happy birthday Thomas. Shout out to Thomas. Um, I think like posting the things that you're working on is just going to build your personal brand more. So I don't, I don't know if that really, if that answers your question totally, but like the reason you see a lot of Tech Academy ads or posts is just because we have to post every day. Like we wanna be out there, we wanna be visible to people and in other networks. So um, that's, that's pretty much why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's okay, there's your answer. <laughs> Definitely, good question. Um, I don't very much because I've been doing this for like 10 years and I just, like I work here full time uh, and I like it here. Like it's fun to just come in, do tasks that are simple um, and it's more structured. But uh, I, I actually rely on a lot of word of mouth. So like I'm working on like four projects right now just because of people coming up to me and being like, hey, so and so told me that you do this, like what, can we talk about that a little bit? So did you start that way? Like, how did you get your, your you must have had some foot in the door to start getting that way, right? Definitely. So, um, yeah, I, okay, I'll, so I'll give you a little background. Um, I was horrible in school. Like, I hated school. I was D's and F's, like, dropped out of high school. Um, it wasn't working for me, like the framework just didn't work. Uh, so I was passionate about art at the time. I'm like, you know, I can figure this out. You know, people told me like, Matthias, you need to have a GED or a high school diploma to be eligible to be even like successful. Like, not true, by the way, like you don't need that. Um, so what I did was I just took a couple of college courses about like graphic design, web design, and I started going up to people that I knew that are starting something like, you know, Aunt Tammy needs a bakery, like she needs a website up for her bakery so people know it exists and boom, like even if it's free, you know, you gotta grind it out. Like just, just 
eat the eat shit a little bit and like then just like sweep it up later on. Like you get that initial brand presence and that reputation and then like you're in. Like so suddenly it's worth, so it's worth it to do a couple projects for free. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And so like that's that's a big part of it is like this like freelance lifestyle takes a lot of sacrifice actually. So in the beginning you're gonna have to do free stuff. Like you're gonna have to be like my uncle needs a logo or a splash page. Like probably more relevant uh, would be web design here because I do a lot of like logo and graphic design. But um, someone needs a splash page, just a way to see where they are, contact them, put yourself on a list or something and like just create it and then go up to them. Be like, look, I, I made this thing, do you need it? Do you, like you don't have one right now and here it is. Let's, let's do the thing and get it up. So like things like that, just smaller projects, um, could be big projects too, but like, you know, you really want to find a scope that's going to be beneficial for you in the beginning. Like you don't want to waste your time. Um, so getting projects in the beginning for free, even if you have to, like just got to just do it right in the beginning, crush it out, build that reputation. People are going to be like, wow, I got a free like splash page. That's amazing. Now people can look me up on the internet. I'm getting so many more clients. And what you did right there was open up an opportunity for growth. So you've established them as a client at this point. They might not know it or you might not know it yet, but they're gonna, their numbers are going to grow and then they're going to need someone to like build that website out. And they're like, hey, you, you did this. Can you help me expand? So that's kind of where it comes back, um, where it comes back to you. Does that answer your question? Cool. So that's kind of like establishing that initial brand. And like, like you were asking, how do you get started? How do you find those clients initially? Um, I'll just give you like nine ways that you can do that right in the beginning. So I actually am going to grab a glass of water. Please excuse me for one moment. My mouth is like completely dried out. It's so refreshing. <clears throat> okay, so finding clients. Um, this part's kind of scary. Like it is, like you have to approach people and you have to like do sales stuff, and it sounds weird, but it's not. It's not that bad. Um, you have to ask people for referrals. So, okay, number one, ask people for referrals. Like within your network, find people that, you know, you've helped out in the past with projects. Be like, hey, do you know anyone that needs this? And like literally just ask them. And that's not a weird question to ask. Like it sounds weird and uncomfortable because you're asking it, but like really you're just asking if anyone needs a website or an app or something like that. Super basic, um, and this is one of those things where like you either win big because you're trying, like you you're landing deals, you're getting clients, and or it could go the other way where you're just like you don't do anything and nothing happens. So like people aren't out there searching, they're not like filtering through a bunch of freelancers. Like I gotta find a freelancer. They're like, oh, what am I gonna do? I need this brand. Like I need this logo, I need a website, I need this back-end database, I don't know what to do, hopefully, you know, hopefully I can figure it out. They're literally waiting for a freelancer to fall out of the sky in front of them. <laughs> like, they want you to ask them. Um, because you're saving them so much work. Like, they don't have to post on job boards, they don't have to do all this stuff. You just come to them and be like, look, here's a solution, let me help you out, let's talk. Number one way. Um, okay, number two. I think, yeah, that kind of kind of covers that. Oh, and also, you know, reach out to the rest of your network too, not just like people you've worked with in the past. <laughs> um, just blast it out, like social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, 
LinkedIn, huge. Like if you just post stuff like, hey, a picture of like, you know, you and your friends and like, oh, I'm like recently taking more jobs and like doing freelance work, let me know if you need anything. And like that that totally works. That's you pushing it out there and preparing yourself for opportunities. And those opportunities will show up. Um, so number two, partner with an agency, someone who lands deals on a frequent basis. So like big agencies that get tons of traffic, they're working with like huge companies to rebrand, do like build out all of these tools. Um, they, they're working on a larger scope than a freelancer. So if they get these little jobs come in like, yeah, you just need like some contact form rework or like some little bit of a design change on your website or something, they're just gonna like pass that off to the freelancers because that's that's not the scope that they're working with. So, um, and I would say like part of freelancing that's kind of scary is like the whole contract thing, like if that comes up. Um, you, you don't really need to do like contracts all the time. Uh, you just need to invoice people. You need to bill them for the service that you offer. But if you're working with an agency, then you're probably gonna sign some contract. Like you'll have some agreement like, hey, don't take our clients, first of all. Like this is something that, this is a brand image that we've built up over the years. Like we wanna work with you. We wanna give you work and get some help from you, but you can't, you know, there are certain rules, there are parameters that you're gonna have to work within. So that's, that's where a contract comes into play a little bit more. Um, and we can talk about you know, making your own contract as well. Um, so partnering with agencies is huge. Um, job boards, Craigslist, bottom right side, there's this little gig section that says like computer, creative, labor, you know, different things like that. That's like people are posting on there every day with needs. Um, that's a great way to find people to work with. It's highly competitive on Craigslist because you might not get as many posts per day. Like, like if I'm doing logo, logo design, excuse me, if I'm doing logo design, I'm not gonna get all of my clients from Craigslist job boards. Like, that's not a realistic thing. Like, maybe once a month or once every other week, you'll see a couple of posts come up that are relevant to you. But if you aren't checking every day, then you're gonna miss out on those opportunities. So I would, I would just check job boards. Also like Indeed, they have a section at the bottom that says freelance work, like contract is okay, uh, or remote contract. Um, so you could literally search for jobs in like Seattle. Um, and you can work as a remote contract worker. Um, and that still counts as freelancing. So job boards, huge. I, I would say like the LinkedIn job board, it's kind of weird. Um, it's harder to post up jobs. So I think people are gonna focus a lot on like Indeed or you know, it's, it, I don't think that you're gonna find as many clients as you would hope to on job boards, but it's still a source. So. I, I wouldn't overlook it. Um, okay, Let's just crank crank these out. All right, number four, follow up with old or lost clients. So hopefully you, you should track everyone that you work with. Um, as a freelancer, you have to track all of your costs, um, all of your deals that you do, like your invoices, you need to track everything that you're working on. So follow up with the people that you've worked with in the past. Like they might be growing and they might need to expand their website or have more services that they want to add. So that could be a very easy source of income for you to just like hit up someone who you already know, you already have a relationship with and just ask them, hey, do you, do you need anything right now? Like how's, how's that website working? How's a splash page? How's this? How's this tool? Do you need extra functionality? Like, what what is your direction? And just like bring yourself back onto their radar. Like, put yourself there because um, then they're gonna know. Oh yeah, like Matias, he's 
he can help us with our rebranding that we're planning on doing, and we aren't gonna just take it to an agency like we had planned on. Um, so get on people's radars that you've been you know, working with in the past. Ad campaigns, um, this is a given, like Google, Facebook, display ads. Uh, if, if you just have a small budget and you put like $100 into Google keywords, then you're gonna be popping up on people's radar and you're gonna get traffic. Even if they don't like reach out to you for something or some service or they don't become your client initially, if you can get that interaction, get them to your website, and better yet, if you have a form on your website where they put their email in and say like, yeah, keep me posted on future opportunities or service changes, like things of that nature, then you capture someone's information, which then you can follow up with. Like, then you're on their radar. They know who you are, you've established some sort of relationship, acquaintance, and you can just take it to the next step later on. Um, so ad campaigns, Facebook ads are stupid cheap right now. Like, it's, it's crazy. You can, you can do pay per click and be like five, 10 cents pay per click and get so much traffic just because everyone's on social media all the time, everybody. And that's the fastest way to get to somebody is through social media ads. Um, any questions so far? Cool. Also, there are no weird questions. Don't feel embarrassed about asking. If you do have questions, just throw it out there because this is good. Like, it's a good conversation point. Uh, while we're on the topic of like platforms, yeah. you use like, you probably use Fiverr, Fiverr for graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, Fiverr is, what platform is that? Like, what type of platform? It's just like a freelance platform. You can be like, oh, I'll make you like a medium sized logo for like $25. Okay, gotcha. In two days. So, like a sort of like a bidding service like you you post up um, <coughs> what your parameters are and then people will bid on your service yeah. or like people will post up what their need is and then a bunch of freelancers will go onto their posts and try and like no, negotiate no it's not like that you'll, you'll be like I make like logos oh, okay and you can have like different options like there will be like a $25 package and a $50 package and like a $100 package cool yeah that's awesome. Um, Fiverr, you said? Yeah, Fiverr. Sweet. Yeah, I'll check it out. Like any any of these platforms that you can get on to where you're getting exposure, it's what you need to be on. Um, There's a lot of like sketchy folks on it though. Yeah. I know people pay like $100 for a logo and then just like something copied from like another site. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Okay, definitely. And like, you know, you have to determine what you're okay offering up and what you aren't ultimately too. Like if people want something priced at $100, like I, I wouldn't do a $50 logo just because I know the time and energy that it takes. Um, and people are gonna want changes too. Like they'll have an initial idea like, oh, I want the sun setting over this mountainscape, but then you do a sun setting over a mountainscape, and they're like, no, not that sun setting over that mountainscape, <laughs> like this other one. And like, it's a process. You have to work with people a lot. So um, packaging your services like that is a great idea. And I, I, I don't know about that website. Like, if it could be a great situation if it's like they post the need and then you just deliver within those parameters and they just have to accept it like as it is okay perfect we got this is the logo that we get um but if it's like they want you to do extra iterations and i don't know i would be a little wary just know what you're willing to do and i think you'll you'll start to find that as you do more projects as you work on apps and build things out um, you'll get a scope like you'll kind of determine what your scope is and the projects that you can work on So let's see. All right, number six, vlog or blog. 
Um, this one's kind of hard for me personally because like I I uh, I don't like to just point a camera at myself and like talk about things. Like right now, this is kind of weird. But um, ultimately, that's my own fear that I have to deal with, and it's holding me back from success. So if I blast my content out on to YouTube and like Snapchat and Instagram, and I'm talking about this thing that I'm passionate about, like people are going to recognize that. Like people are going to be like, oh, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. Perfect. Um, also, that's so much more content that's just like going out in front of people. Like you're, you're building that presence, and people are going to start noticing you more. So, like blogging, um, I have a list of over 2,000 guest blogging opportunities. So, like, you can just send these people a blog post, and they'll post it up on their blog, and you'll get exposure. They'll get exposure. It's kind of like a trade. If anyone wants that list, I am totally down to give it away. Um, but that that's a great way to get exposure as well. Create your own free blog. WordPress, you can make a free blog. Just talk about your experience like, hey, today I made this application or I like connected this API to this website that I'm working on. And just kind of like talk about your process and you know, how, what tools you used and put some code blocks in there and like really like get people engaged in the process because that's like ultimately other people want to do this too and that's going to be very valuable to them. But not only is it valuable to people that are on your level, but potential clients are going to be like, whoa, this guy has authority in the marketplace. And what I mean by authority is like leverage. Um, you have some level of expertise and people respect that. Like when people don't build up that skill and you come out like, you know, torch lit and you're like talking about the things that you know, they're like, wow, okay, this guy is gonna make an app. Like he's gonna go huge. But like ultimately you're just putting yourself out there and like talking about your process. It's nothing crazy, but people respect that and then that gives you some leverage over the marketplace. You can raise your pricing and like, you know, get more people involved. So, um, and through blogging, also another way, like an ebook, that's totally free. You can create a free ebook. Um, what is it? K Kindle Direct Publishing. So it's like Amazon's publishing service. You can just write a book about making an app. Like, this is how I made a website. This is the main page, and I made it with this structure. And this is some basic CSS that shows the different sections. And like, you know, just work through it and like do that extra work to show your process so that people are like, okay, I trust this guy. Like he knows or she. Um, they know about the process involved and like they can get me the final product that I'm looking for. So that's the important thing, is showing that you know how to generate the final product. Uh, so ebook, and that, that also brings you more authority too. Like, if someone's published a book, like, whoa, they published a book, cool. Like, this is, they're a professional. <laughs> I don't know, it's like this image thing. Um, so yeah, form, Form that influence within a sphere of people, within a marketplace or an industry, like, and that will open up your potential for projects. Um, so we're talking about like leads, kind of. Um, let's see, this was how to how to find clients. So an interesting one is generating leads and. Um, also tracking them is important. And there are so many ways to generate leads. I, I recommend just, you know, going on the internet, like going to Google and be like, how do I generate leads? A few ways that are easy. LinkedIn, again, huge social network right now for the professional world. Um, LinkedIn, you can just search for people within a specific set of filters, and it will like generate a ton of results. And then you click on their name, you click connect, be like, hey, 
I, you're in the area, I want to connect with professionals, like add me. They add you and then you talk to them, like, hey, can I get your email? Like, if, if you can get their email and their contact information, then like you put that in your database of potential clients, that's what lead generation is. And then you have, you have something to work with. Like you see that they're releasing a website and they just need some extra features on it, like reach out to them, be like, hey, I see you just, you're establishing your brand, like what can I do? And it, it's weird like capturing people's information without them like being really aware of it, like it's kind of creepy to us. But um, actually it's more about what you do with that information. So like, you know, I can, <laughs> I can go through LinkedIn, just capture a bunch of names, be like, these are all of the people that I'm going to reach out to, reach out to them. They're expecting it. They're on LinkedIn. So like, don't, don't even worry about that voice in your head being like, this is too stalkery. Like, I, this is weird. I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing this. Like, it's OK. It's LinkedIn. It's for networking. People are putting themselves out there. And they want to ultimately become more successful. So any way that you can help them attain that. Um, that's, that's what people are looking for. Um, I've never had any like people say, how did you find me or get my information? Like, what are you doing? This is weird. It's always like, oh, hey, thanks for reaching out. Um, not at this time. We don't need that. Or yeah, we're working on this new project. Uh, here are some more details. What can you do? Um, it's, it's always opened up a conversation. So. Don't be afraid of holding on to people's data. <laughs> it sounds creepy, but it's not. Facebook, on the other hand, we'll see about those guys. Um, so finally, like the ninth thing, I would say, and you brought this up um, with that service, Fiverr. What they're doing is packaging services. Um, Package services or packaging a product is a very good way to just like compartmentalize things and you can have it ready for the client before they even tell you what the project is. So, you know, Uncle Bill needs like a splash page. You already have this splash page built out, but he needs it to say a couple of different things. You literally take 10 minutes, like change some of the paragraph tags or like enter in his phone number, email, like where it emails to. And suddenly like you just built a whole new splash page, customized, tailored for the client and made 100, 200 bucks, like easy. And that was something that already existed, that you already had like ready. So that's a package service. Um, like I, I really wanna see someone do that actually, like just generate like a splash page, go out to your favorite bar because like there's so many bars that just don't have any website or anything like so many places here in Portland, but um, like a page. no, totally. So a splash page is anything that precedes the website. So it's like the first thing that you see okay. when you enter a website. Um, like the pop-up thing that popped up. Exactly, and like websites could just be made of that one page. Like they could. The whole website could just be one page, um, and that's not an issue. So, like, building out splash pages for people just so that they have extra exposure, or like, any anyone can access them on the internet is detrimental. Like, everyone is on their phones like 24/7. They're sending links to friends. Like, you know, you, you're on the bus, and everyone's just like, it's like glowing, like. This is so powerful. So get people up online. Like that's a huge way to make money. Um, if you can sell like three or four or five of those packages, or even just like give them to people for free, that's like three or four, like three to five clients that you've made. Like you just give a bar, be like, hey, I see that you don't have a website. I'm not going to build you a whole website, but I'll just give you this page. So you're up. People know you, that you exist. I'll charge you 200 bucks, and I'll help you. I'll help you set up all the hosting space. So you cover the $80 or whatever it is to host the website, um, and then you bill them at the end. Be like, 
that's all. Now you're up. Like, let's work together in the future. Boom, client. Easy. I really want to see someone do that. Just like blast out splash pages. Um, so those are that's that's some different ways to uh, get clients. Um, now it's it's weird because like the hustle is a mindset game. It's purely what state of mind you're in. Um, there's a lot of voices that pop up in your head like, I'm gonna fail. Like, what are you doing? You don't you don't know what you're doing, Matthias. Like, this is not your professional title, a logo designer. Like, that's so prestigious. No, those voices are just like, no. The voices in your head and society telling you that you can't is just going to totally set you up for failure. So you really have to kind of tune into those voices and like really start acknowledging their existence and determining you know, wh which ones are going to be useful to me moving forward. So there's ways to do that. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of varies person to person, like the voices that you struggle with. And you know, not to sound too preachy or anything, but like we all struggle with insecurities, and like it's a pain in the ass, really. Like it sucks, and you you realize your own potential and like how those voices hold you back. I mean, if like if you can cut those out, that's 100%. Like you're on your own now. You've just managed to ditch those insecurities and you can grab success like it's it's a mindset game purely a mindset game so like like one of the hugest things for me was like i said you know i dropped out of high school uh i don't have my ged but like it it took so much work and so many people telling me like you're not gonna you're not gonna make it dude like you need to go back and gear ged and that was just like the fuel that I needed. Like, instead of being like, oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, I'm gonna never amount to anything. I need to like do it the traditional way. No, it's like, no, you know what? Screw you. <laughs> Thank you so much for telling me that I can't do it because now I'm gonna try it that much harder to actually do it. So like now I have no GED, but I've been like grinding since 18, literally took some college classes. I didn't even get a degree that way. I just like wanted to hustle. I landed an almost $1,000 contract at the age of 19. And I'm like, perfect, this is it. Like, I'm off, I'm in the race. So I think like just really utilizing those voices and just turning it into, you know, optimism is gonna be key. Um, and yeah, choosing optimism over pessimism, over, excuse me, pessimism. Like when you wake up in the morning, choose three things to be grateful about, you know? Don't be like, ah, oh, shit, another day, a lot of bed, gotta, gotta go into the office and like, like no, just like there's so much more going for you in life than, you know, going to the office or the bad things that happen. Like so many good things happen throughout the day. And if you take those first 10 minutes of your day to be grateful and like actually acknowledge the good things in your life, then you're gonna become more optimistic. And if you're more optimistic, you're gonna become more confident and you're gonna hear less voices in your head. It's just like this cycle of self-improvement. So I think it, it is really important to be grateful in the morning and that helps with the whole mindset thing. Um, and also, you're going to take some big L's. Like, you will lose. And that's a good thing. Like, being able to, like, accept that loss and turn it into a learning thing, like, turn it into something that's going to give you value in the future. Like, Joe Schmo spilled coffee on himself. Like, you aren't a bad person. He's just angry that he spilled coffee earlier this morning, you know? He's, it's nothing against you. But... The moment that you take it on and make it about you is the moment where you really do lose. And that's, that's not, um, that's not going to be beneficial in this process. So you're going to want to just really like accept that as a learning process. Um, you know, 
shoot your shot. Like, try to get those clients. Reach out to people on LinkedIn. Someone's like, dude, don't, don't message me again. Like, I don't know you. Like, whatever. Like, message the other seven billion people in the world. Like, there's so much opportunity. And as soon as you take a loss, don't, don't just, you know, don't turn in your badge. Just keep going. Um, let's see. How are we doing on time? Doing all right. 40 minutes. Cool. Wow, this is actually going longer than I thought. So I will try and wrap it up here shortly, and we can get some questions. Um, embrace the loss. You know, this is going to require some sacrifices. Like I said, it's not just wake up, have a mimosa, and sit by the phone. Like, that would be ideal. But it's, freelancing is not going to be like that. It's, uh, it's a grind. So. Um, you're going to sacrifice some things like, do you really need that new pair of Jordans? Probably not. Like, they look really cool, but what you need to do is, like, get the cheapest coffee at a cafe and just sit there and grind out some work. Like, um, and then, you know, I think this one's, this one's kind of hard for people. Like, there's some, and I don't think everyone struggles with this, obviously, but there is some level of, like, starting out and just kind of this level of entitlement. Like, I quit my job. I'm trying. Like, I put myself out there once or twice. Like, why? Why does nobody, like, why is this not happening for me? Why am I not successful? It's like, dude, because you got to do it a thousand more times, and then, you'll, and then you'll start noticing progress. Like, it takes years to actually get to a place where you know, people are noticing numbers. And like, even at that point, like, don't buy the Jordans. Like, it's tempting. You don't want that flashy car. Like, you're starting to become successful. You aren't successful yet. Like, just keep going. Like, save, save whatever you can. And, you know, honestly, I, this is something I struggle with too. Like, I could be way more successful if I just didn't buy that coffee in the morning. You know, every day, that coffee, that money adds up. Like, and that's money that you could just put back into your business, put, you know, all of those coffees go into Google AdWords, then you suddenly have, like, thousands more dollars. Like, that's the sort of thing that this translates into. Um, so don't get hung up on that rejection. Like, it's not going to serve you. Take advantage of the re rejection. Turn it into fuel. Be like, dude, your logos are crap. Well, now I'm just going to get better. Thank you for telling me that because... Like, I know my logos are good, but just because you said they look like crap, I'm going to make sure no one says that again. Boom. Like, that's fuel right there. Um, so it's, it's purely a mindset game. Um, practice, become an expert. Just become an expert in your field. As you're blogging, like, pushing out content, people are going to give you feedback and, you know, start learning. Like, dip into some other areas that you're interested in or some areas that might benefit you in knowing more about that topic and just like really jump into it. Um, then lastly, like confidence is about surrounding yourself with positivity. So if you don't have a positive network, you need to get that. If there's negative people around you that are like struggling with, you know, their own self image and like being unsure and just like not going for it, then like find the people that are just going for it and who really want to succeed because those are going to be the people that give you the most growth and push you forward the, the best. So um, don't, don't get stuck in any harmful patterns because um, it's not going to benefit your success ultimately. And if you're not prepared to hustle, then you better get that job back, <laughs> you know, <laughs> essentially. Um, so the overall process, I mean, it's, it, it is highly adaptable to whatever the client's needs are, whatever, you know, your limits are um, as a freelancer. So, like, kind of figure out what you want to do, what interests you, what makes you feel fulfilled, and then jump on that. And there's always going to be a gap in the marketplace. So if you find that gap, fill it. Um, yeah, start hitting people up, stay strong, like keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, grind it out, and you'll be making millions soon, <laughs> essentially. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Uh, with, with like the scenario where you're talking about like having a splash page and kind of 
Yeah, so uh, that's the beauty of it, is like you get to decide what that would look like, ultimately. Um, you could go either way. Uh, you could just do hosting out of pocket. Like, you could pay for the hosting and then bill them at the end and say, like, this is hosting. This is how much it costs for hosting. This is the fee that I have for setting up that hosting space for you. And then this is the cost of the actual splash page that I made. So it's like, th that's where we go back to like generating some package. So like your package could be like hosting space, um, website <laughs> updates, splash page, and like I'll be your, I'll be your manager. Like I'll manage this whole process for you. And then you can build them at the end of every month for everything that you do for them. Like if you update the header and then like some, like add an event like, oh, this month we have so-and-so coming from out of town to do a show. I don't know. Like whatever that looks like, you create this package and then you deliver it. Um, so yes, like you could go both ways, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Totally. That could be like way less yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, it depends how you want to approach it. If you're looking to, if you want to generate income over time, and like have a client that you're working with on a monthly basis, I would be like, hey. I'll, I'll set up your hosting space for you, and I'll publish the website, and then any changes that you want to make, I'll do it for you. And then they get to decide yes or no, ultimately. Um, and if they're like, no, we want to do our own changes, then you can kind of readjust, be like, OK, here's the web hosting package that you need to buy. And then once you have all of the information, send it to me, and I'll upload your website. And then you just charge them for the website. So the beauty of, like, being a freelancer is that you can invoice people for whatever you want, like setup fees, um, teaching people how to run things themselves. Like, as long as you can um, put it on an invoice at the end, and just say like, "This is the service that I provided, and this is the cost," and then send it to them. They send you the money. That's that's all that it comes down to in the end. And also. Oh, it's ten dollar a month oh, subscription. Oh yeah, I'm trying to uh, just have coffee here. <laughs> like, yeah, this is a great place for coffee. <laughs> Solid question, yeah. Definitely. So um, yeah, good question. Um, ultimately, it comes down to um, just where you see yourself at that moment. Like, do you feel comfortable? I mean, OK, maybe comfortable is the wrong word, because it might feel very uncomfortable. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, I was like at this point where 
you know, I was doing a lot of free projects, and um, I'm like, okay, I, I can do them, I understand the process. Now I feel like I'm starting to get taken advantage of. And like, that was my own thing. Like, people aren't out there to take advantage of me. People are out there to get some product, right? So once you start feeling that like, okay, like this isn't working for me, this isn't like growing into a business, this is just me like helping people out. Once you get to that point, then start, start thinking about, you know, okay, where have I excelled and where do I feel most confident? And just start capitalizing on that. Capitalize on the confidence that you have around a specific product. Um, for me, it's like logos. I, I love art and drawing and logos, but I feel totally comfortable just being like $700. Like this is what I offer for a basic logo. And I get a lot of knee-jerk reactions like, oh, whoa, like I don't know how I feel about that. And I'm like, well, I understand the process now. This, and it took me doing lots of different projects like that to like understand that I'm going to have to come up with five different logos in the beginning that they get to select from. And then we're going to review those logos, go through multiple rounds of reviews. They're going to want it polished a certain way. So I like kind of have an idea of the overall process. And like then if you have an idea of that process, and you can kind of like kind of figure out a time for yourself, like how much time it's gonna take you, then give yourself an hourly wage and like don't quote people hourly. Just like be like, okay, this is gonna this logo is gonna take me twenty hours probably with some reviews. I wanna make thirty five dollars an hour, so twenty times thirty five, seven hundred dollars. And then just start say like this is the base and like and again this is like experience. Um, you will do lots of projects where you will get taken advantage of maybe, and that's how you learn and that's how you make those adjustments. But I think like just kind of setting a baseline and then determining the scope of the project is going to be very important. So um, you can kind of get an idea of what people want and how lenient they're going to be, and then just price it based off of that. Uh, if, if uh, do, you, do you do a specific, like is there a specific area that you want to get into um, yeah, with freelancing? I mean, not really. I, I just kind of started the whole course, so I'm at the beginning, but I was just curious about like, uh, like how that would, like how you would do that. Definitely. Um, do you know what, like technologies you're kind of leaning towards or want to get into or learn more about as you're going through the boot camp? Like ultimately, do you have like a dream job yet or are you just kind of testing the waters? Uh, I, yeah, I, I just, you know, I just came, came to the tech and I kind of just was tailoring this question based on like what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. I don't even know if I want to necessarily do freelance, but it's an interesting thing. For sure. That's Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, as you start to build those skills up, and then kind of like you work on those types of projects, you'll get an idea of the work that goes into it. Um, I would say the best way is to just like start telling people that this is how much you charge. Um, and the client's not going to know that you were doing free projects before. They're just going to know that you did projects before, and this is how much you charge now. It's not going to be like, wait, they got a free thing. What, what about me? It's just like, oh, okay, this is, these are the projects you do, and this is how much it is. Perfect. So it's, it's a, like being confident is pretty key in that, uh, I'd say. Well, and one thing, uh, sorry, Matthias. Yeah. Um, Yeah, definitely. That's a good point. Um, like, 
figuring out what other people are pay pricing out their services for. Like, um, so recently I was I was doing a logo quote and I, you know, I look at what other people are charging and I kind of charge based on that and the scope of the project. And then I told them and they're like, whoa, dude, that's crazy. Like, I only have like 200 bucks. Like, so at that point it's like, all right, this is what you're gonna sacrifice because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like work on this the same amount of time that I would work on a $700 project. So this is this is what we have to work with. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do this quick and I'll work with you a little bit on some reviews. Let's work within your budget, but it's gonna look a lot different than if I were to give you this. Like it's more of a minimum viable project product. Excuse me. So yeah. Yeah, kind of, and like, and it really depends. Like, ultimately, you can say no too. Like, um, I. It depends who I'm working with. Uh, if it's like a friend or family, then I'm, you know, I'm not gonna charge them what I normally charge people, which I should because they're getting the same product, right? But, um, like, it, it comes down to what you're willing to sacrifice or if you want to sacrifice anything because the guaranteed those four hours are gonna turn into 10. Like it's, it's just not um, reasonable to finish a project within four hours. <laughs> so um, yeah, you really, it, and that comes again like with doing more projects, you'll be able to figure out what you can do within a certain amount of time. So I think that's important to kind of keep, tra keep track of in your head. Cool. Well, thank you guys for having me today. Thanks. Awesome. And see you next week. <laughs>